Well, good morning, all of my UHK family. I hope that you are having a great start to your Sunday mornings. I hope mum and dad made you bacon and eggs for breakfast. I hope that you got yourself a coffee and put your feet up and are having an awesome morning. I know that it's weird that we're not together this morning with this lockdown, school's online, and you've got to do everything at home, and uh, even UHK is online today. But don't worry because we still have an awesome lesson for all of you who are watching along. So why don't you give me a wave. Hi everybody that's watching, give me a wave. Good morning, we're gonna get shake our hands up so that we're ready to go for the lesson and uh, we're gonna get into it. So today, we are going to be learning about how we are made in God's image. That's you and me, we're all made in God's image. And today, specifically, we're gonna learn about empathy. And uh, do you know what empathy is? Well, if you don't know what empathy is, then you are about to find out because I am going to throw it over, over, over to Tabor and Cam and they are going to intro our lesson this morning. So give Tabor and Cam a wave and I'll see you soon. Hey friends, welcome to Church at Home. My name is Tabor and I'm Cameron. How are you guys doing today? We just wrapped up a game of dodgeball and you know what? I've been pretty bummed since I lost, but I gotta say, Cameron is such a good buddy that he didn't even rub it in my face. Well, you seem pretty sad, so I felt sad too. As much as I love winning, I hate when my friends have to lose. Thanks, Cam. I'm feeling better already. You know, there's a big word called empathy. We're gonna learn about it. It means that we share feelings with other people. Just like when you're sad, I felt sad. That's like our Bible story today. You guys are gonna love it. You know what always makes me feel better? Singing! Let's stand up and sing Ephesians 2.10. It says, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Let's hear it! That was great, guys. That song reminds us that because we are created in the image of God, we are able to become more and more like Him. Which means we can show empathy to other people just like Jesus did. Let's check out the story from the Bible of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead to learn more about how He shows empathy to others. Stories of the Bible. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha. Here you go who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus's sickness will not end in death. 
No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I, let's go. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus. But Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, yeah, will be okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said. He will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus. But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here, so they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. You were right, Tabes. Jesus did show empathy when he cared for Lazarus and his family. Because they were sad, Jesus was sad too. The Bible tells us that Jesus wept on behalf of his dead friend and his friend's sisters. It hurt him to see them so upset. Part of loving people as God loves them means sharing feelings with them. But empathy is more than just sad. I can feel happy when other people feel happy. I can feel angry when other people feel angry. I can feel excited when other people feel excited. And so many more feelings. That's right. And we can even show empathy to people who aren't our friends. We can have empathy for everyone because it shows people that we care about them and that God loves them. Okay, so this morning it is time for a quick little break. 
So, for all of you who are watching along, here's what I want you to do. For the next 60 seconds, I need you to do three exercises with me. We're gonna do jumping jacks, like this one. We're gonna do jumping jacks, and then we're gonna do a squat. I might even go out of shops with this. Bang, one squat, two squats. And then the last thing is I'm gonna need you to jog on the spot. You have 60 seconds to do as many of those three exercises as you can. Are you ready? Let's go. Jeez, I am puffed out after that stamina. I, after those exercises, I am absolutely just, I'm puffed. Okay, I'm gonna try and catch my breath really quickly. So I hope that you went okay with all of those exercises. I hope you're not feeling too puffed out because now we're going to go into our Screen Hunters segment with Greg, or should I say, Mario. Hey guys, it's me, Greg. <laughs> Okay, I can't do the voice the whole time, but welcome back to Screen Hunters. Dan and I have been pretty bored here in the studio, which, well, it led to a little bit of a discovery. That's right, we can play video games on the green screen. Sort of. I'll show you how it works. We've hooked up Mario Party to the green screen so you can see all the gameplay on the screen behind me. I will of course be playing as a Mario and cameraman Dan will be playing as Luigi. We're playing to see who the ultimate Mario Party winner is. I have my controller right here and let's get this thing kicked off. Cameraman Dan is Luigi and we're jumping here. Look at all these mini games we got. All right, here we go. Smashing Crab, me versus Dan. So Dan's driving the crab right now and they're trying to throw the smash on me, but I'm feeling quick today. Whoa, that was a close call. We got 10 seconds coming down, Dan. Stay alive, buddy, stay alive. Move like a crab, shift like a crab. One, whoa! First game, Greg. Mario wins. So next up, we're in the kitchen, everybody. We're playing a little game called Sizzlin' Steaks. We're gonna see who can cook their meat the fastest here. Oh, I lost my first meat! Gotta be easy with the pan. Really flipping and marinating there. Dan's got one side left, come on! Come on, Mario! His plate is full! I'm still competing! <laughs> I'm losing my steak here, team! That's why I microwave all my food. Strictly cereal and DiGiorno pizza. All right, so Dan won that one. Luigi wins. Turns out sizzling steaks wasn't my game. Now I love this game, I played Little League 10 years. So Dan, I'm gonna give you a run for your money, buddy. Oh, I'm in the zone, Dan. Heater. All right, you gotta be quick, Dan. You gotta be quick, buddy. Oh, you gotta be quick. Oh no, let's go. Mario with another win. I told you not to challenge me in baseball. Maybe cooking, Dan, not baseball. It's a little game called Slapparazzi. Now you're getting everyone out of the way so you can take the perfect selfie. Ugh, I'm getting beat up over here. Get out of the way. Yes, Mario! Plus three, looking beautiful. Not today, not today, Dan. Come on, Mario, get in there, buddy. Woo! With the fist out. You can do it, buddy, go! Yeah, Mario! <laughs> Plus three points. Mario coming in for the win. Dan, I told you I was gonna beat you, buddy. You had nothing against me. Look at the champion. 
celebrate him now. It's a Mario. It's a me. Man, I love playing this game. And uh, Dan, I'm sorry. I gotta apologize. Y you did great. You did great too. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, look, I get a little bit competitive. Dan hasn't beat me yet. He's actually, you know, he's never beat me in Mario Party. It's one of my favorite games. And I tend to go a little bit overboard when I play the game. I mean, I even have a fake mustache on. I mean, there's nothing wrong with winning, but being a good sport is important too. Now, even when we win, or you do better at something than someone else, we should still be sensitive to their feelings. I mean, Dan's a good sport. He's my camera guy, he's my friend. But even though I won, it means that he lost. Now, since he's my friend, I can be sad that he lost while still being happy that I won. Now, being a good friend and, a, and a caring about other people's feelings is what's most important. Now, we've talked before about how we were made in God's image. Not in a Mario costume, but the best example of what it looks like to act like God is to look at Jesus' life while he was here on earth. Now, people at that time couldn't fully understand just how important Jesus was, but that never made Jesus arrogant. He didn't go around demanding special treatment because he was the son of God. He didn't ignore the problems and the pain of those around him either. Jesus made time for everyone because he cared deeply for them all. Even though he was 100% God, Jesus was also 100% man. He had feelings and concerns, family and neighbors and friends, just like all of us. One of those friends was a man named Lazarus. Jesus got the word that his friend was sick. When Jesus arrived to the town where Lazarus lived, Lazarus' sister went to Jesus and told him that Lazarus had died. This news greatly moved and troubled Jesus. He cared about Lazarus and his sisters, and he was so sad. Now, he even wept. Now, even as a man, Jesus had immense power, and eventually, he used that power to raise Lazarus from the dead. That's incredible. But what's even more incredible is what happened when Jesus first visited Lazarus' tomb. He cried for his friend. But despite all of his power and wisdom in that moment, Jesus still experienced the same grief and sadness that we would feel if we lost one of our friends. I love this story so much because it shows the extent that Jesus cared for those around him. He never acted superior or uncaring, even though he had plenty of reason to. Jesus loves each of us the same way. And he cares about the problems we experience and the sadness that we feel. Now, he might have more wisdom and perspective than us, but that doesn't make our earthly troubles any less important to him. But if we can follow Jesus' example of empathy, we'll be able to love others in a similar way. You can celebrate when a friend wins a game. You could be sad with someone when their parents get a divorce, and you can be excited for them when they accomplish something really important. By recognizing our friends and how they feel and the things they experience in their lives, we can be better friends and neighbors to those around us. So, when you're going through hard times. Remember, Jesus cares about your experience. And when you see someone else going through a hard time, you can love them, be happy for them, care for them, or even cry with them like Jesus did. Now, that is it for today's lesson. I'm getting out of the Mario outfit, and Dan, I owe you a big apology. I think I'm going to actually challenge him to another game of Mario Party. In the meantime, I'll see you guys next week. Dan, let's do this thing. And I'm sorry for being mean to you. It won't happen again. But the mustache is coming on. We're playing. I'm taking sizzling steaks this time, Dan. I'm the cook. Hey, thanks, Greg. That was awesome. It's so important to show other people that we care about how they feel. God cares about how we feel. And since we were created in God's image as his children, we can and should care about how other people feel. That's some good stuff, Tabor. And you know what? Seeing Greg back in the studio got me thinking. I think we're ready for another game of, what do you think? Oh yeah, it's game time! Hey kids, what time is it? Alrighty, we are going to play a game this morning, which I'm really excited about because it's a little bit of a challenge. 
So for all of you who are watching along, we're gonna play this game. Everyone's involved. If you're watching at home, if you're watching in your, your bedroom, in your lounge room, wherever you're watching from, you can get involved. You don't even need to stand up. You just need these things, some hands, and we're good to go. That's it. And you need to be fast because this game is seven things in 11 seconds. So this is how it's going to work. We're gonna give you 11 seconds to name seven different items all the way from candy bars through to sports and cartoon characters. We're gonna give you four or five rounds and go at getting this right. So for example, if it said, name seven of your friends in 11 seconds. I have 11 seconds to say James, Reese, Justin, Tyrant. I've got to get all of those in as, as fast as I can before the 11 seconds is up. There's going to be a countdown on your screen to help you out. And the way that you keep track is on your fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're done. Cool? All right, we're going to get into the first one. So the first one is this. Name seven candy bars in 11 seconds. All right, are you ready? Set. Go! Oh, the time is up. How did you go? Did you get it? Did you get seven candy bars in 11 seconds? All right, next one. Name seven cartoon characters in 11 seconds. Ready, set, go. I'll give you a hint. Mickey Mouse, my favorite. Oh, the time is up, good work. That was round number two. We're gonna move into round number three. Now, here we go, the next one. Name seven sports teams in 11 seconds. I will give you a hint. Ready, set, go. The hint is St. Kilda Football Club. Very dear to my heart. I love the Saints. Oh, good work. Time is up for that one. All right, we're going to have our last round here. Are you ready? Time is up. Here we go. Last round. Name seven famous Bible characters in 11 seconds. Ready, set, go. Last one. All right, your hint is David. Three, two, one. Good work, everybody. Good work. I think that you have all done incredibly well. I'm sure you did because I don't think that those were too hard. I reckon that, uh, look, the Bible character is pretty easy. My name is David, so you had a hint sort of all through the lesson today. And uh, I know that you know your candy bars, okay? You ask for them every week. We know you love candy. I know you would have got the candy bars. But great job, awesome work on the game. Let's move to the next bit. So right now, we are going to do some giving time, some time where we take our pocket money, if we were together that is, and we put it in the well for uh, the cause that we are giving to this term. And this term, we are giving to the Hope Pantry. In our North Campus and in our East Campus, do you know that there are lots of different people who are a part of our church community? They might not come along to church on a Sunday morning, but they are a part of our community. And what we want to do is we want to help them if they are struggling. And unfortunately, lots of people at this time are not as lucky as we are. They're not as, as, as wealthy or they're not, uh, food's not as easy for them to get. And so at this time, there are some people who are really struggling. And so we want to help them because that is what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to love him and to love our neighbor. And so these people in our community are our neighbors and we want to love them. So we are giving this term to the Hope Pantry, which helps to feed people and give them some food and some drinks and some important things for home that they might need um, in, these, in these packs and they can take them home to look after their families who are struggling. So I wanna say thank you to all of you who have given uh, and put some money in the well, however much it is. It doesn't matter whether it's a lot of money or a little bit of money. Anything that you give is helping people who are in need and who need to be helped. And so we are, are sending our money to the Hope Pantry to help out our communities. So thank you so much and uh, much love for you, UHK. You are very generous and very thankful. Well, thank you so much for watching and being a part of UHK. This morning, I wanna once again say, 
We miss you a lot. We wish that we could be together in the room, all of our UHK family and everyone who's part of our church kids team. We miss you. We hope that you're having a good day and that you enjoyed today's lesson. I want to say once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing along with us. I uh, hope that you learned something and uh, I want to always remind you that at this time, it's a little bit weird, we're stuck at home, we're in lockdown, um, but God still loves you and uh, we're really looking forward to getting together again so that we can all uh, praise God together and spend some time together, have fun, we can throw a ball at Chris because it's funny and I'm looking forward to getting back to doing that again. So have an awesome Sunday, thanks for watching with us and we'll see you next week.